Hello friends, welcome back to part six of logic performance tuning. Uh, in part four, we had discussed a lot about the basic concept of threads, what actually threads, what exactly, what exactly execute inside threads, and then how we can uh, take the thread downs and how we can do a certain kind of a tuning in that, how we can monitor the threads. In this session, we are going to discuss about the thread pool tuning. Okay, and apart from that, we are going to discuss about the work managers as well, because this is related with the thread pool, or you can say, which is related with the threads. Okay, so let us begin with uh, the discussions on the thread pool and then work manager. Okay, so let us take a small comparison of uh, logic uh, prior to 9.0 version and the version that came after 9.0. OK, so there is a huge difference in terms of the thread pools and threads when we talk about the web server prior to 9.0 release. OK, so prior to 9.0 release, there were on, uh, the, there were different execute queues in the web server. OK, for the different kind of works. OK, so as I have explained in, in the part four as well, uh, in web logic, you will have an external request which is coming from the external clients and there would be internal requests as well, right? Where your admin server is talking with your managed servers, your one managed server is talking to another managed servers, your managed server is talking to admin servers. There, that means you have an internal request as well, okay? So prior to 9.0, there, there were uh, different queues for the internal request and then there were different queues for the external request, okay? And based on, on the different queues, the threads were getting assigned to your different execute queues, whether it is for internal request or whether it is for external request. So when we talk about the releases, those were 9.0 onwards, they, it comes with a single execute queue. That means you will have, a, instead of a separate execute queues, you will only have a single execute queue where all the requests will come and then it, the threads will get assigned to each and every request from the execute queue, whether it is an internal request or whether it is an external request. Okay, so earlier it was a bit difficult for administrators to manage the different queues and because he, uh, the uh, admin will have to do a different performance tuning of uh, queues, okay, right, for the internal request, external request and thread pool size, okay, but now 9.0 on, uh, onward, the execute queues get consolidated in, into a single queue. Apart from that, the self-tuned thread is also introduced, okay. So earlier, you had to tune your threads manually prior to 9.0 version, but from 9.0 onwards, okay, the web logic has own self-tuning thread pool. That means generally we do not do any kind of a manual tuning for the thread pool in the web logic server from 9.0 on onwards. Okay. It automatically tunes. So how does it automatically tune is that it auto automatically take care of all the requests that is coming to web logic server. That is how much time it takes for the execution. What is the current uh, thread pool size as of now, what is the expected load at, uh, of the road load at a particular time, okay? And what would the threads required for that one for execution for handling of that particular request? Sometime it may be only 10 threads, sometime it may be 300 threads, okay? So it will automatically shrink and expand your uh, thread pools and automatically create the threads or uh, inside your pool and then according to the demand of your applications and demand of the executions. Okay, so generally in from 9.0 onwards, we do not do this kind of a tuning for thread tools because it is now a self-tuning thread pool. Okay, and we have only a single queue uh, which is going to maintain for each and every request. Okay, now there would be a question that if, if there is a single execute queue, okay, and then how the performance uh, will work in that case, there could be possibility that the performance will get degraded for when we have a single queue which is there for execution of internal requests and external requests as well. Okay, so for that, WebLogic server automatically prioritize the request as well, by own as well. Where I said it is now with a self-tuned thread pool, it is all, always prioritize the request that is coming from the external client, which is execute, getting executed from the internal uh, request, which request has a priority, it will automatically decide based on the experience. Okay, and apart from that one, if you wanted to define a priority for your applications, that means you wanted to have a, a large number of pool for some certain set of applications and then less number of threads for certain kind of applications from the self-tune pool as well, then you have a concept or a feature has been introduced that is called a work manager, okay? For example, if I have two applications, one is a bit critical application where I wanted to have a less number of threads get assigned out of self-tuning thread pool, okay? Then I can assign a different kind of a quota for that one, okay? I would say that, okay, 70% of threads uh, would be assigned to application A and then rest 30% of 
uh, the threads from the self tuning tool get assigned to my application B. So that kind of a tuning you can do with the help of work manager. So what is what we are doing with the help work manager is we are prioritizing the request and then we are assigning the uh, the different kind of a threads. Okay, based on the priority of my application using my work manager. Okay, so WebLogic Server introduced work manager with as as the mechanism to prioritize the work and allocate the threads from the thread pool based on the rules defined for execution. Okay, so as I said, if you wanted to give certain more priority to some applications or maybe to less priority to certain applications, okay, and I would I know that I have a self tuning thread pool and there is a limit of thread pool as well inside my self tuning as well, which we will see in the next slide. And out of that pools, which is in my self tuning thread pools, you wanted to assign certain number of thread to application A, some number of uh, threads to application B, certain percentage of threads to an application C. So that kind of a configurations you can do with the help of work manager. Okay. And how you can define your work managers or different, you can say about the different kind of the rules that you can or constraint that you can define with the help of work managers are fair share request class, response time request, minimum thread constraint, maximum thread constraints, capacity constraint, context request class. Okay. These are the different kind of a work managers that you can, you can define based on your application requirements. Okay. So we will have another session for discussion on about the different kind of classes for the work manager. Okay, but it is very clear from the number as well. When we talk about fair share, that means out of 100%, how much how much percentage you can assign to application A and how what is the percentage of threads that you want to assign to application B. When we talk about response time, that what could be the response time for a particular applications for the particular threads? What is the minimum threads that you wanted to assign for application? What is the maximum number of threads from the thread pool you wanted to assign to a particular application? If you have a certain kind of a capacity constant based on that, you wanted to define the threads from the pool. Okay, so these kind of a, uh, configurations uh, you can define from the thread pool with the help of uh, your work manager. Okay, but this is specifically based on the demand or requirement of your application. So incoming requests are assigned an internal priority based on the configuration of work manager. You can create to manage the work performed by your applications. The server increase or decrease thread available for the execute queue depending on the demand from the various work managers. That means if multiple applications are deployed and then for each application you have configured the work manager with respect to each work manager you have configured the policy that what is the number of threads I have to assign for each and every application from the thread pool based on the test whenever the request come it will come to your work manager and then it, from work manager the respective threads will be assigned and the request will get executed. Okay, and when we talk about work manager types, so we have three types of work managers, default work manager, global work manager, and application scope work manager. The difference is very straightforward. The one is the default work manager. When you are not defining any custom work manager, which is I saw in maximum time in, in, in for, for maximum clients that they do not define the work managers. In that case, the default work manager will work in that case, which is the fair share work manager, which I will go to, which I'll show you on the next screen. Okay, apart from that, you have a global work manager. That means if you wanted to have a work manager, which you wanted to assign uh, to all of the application that you have deployed in your domain. So there would be a possibility that you wanted to have a certain kind of a policies for all of your applications in terms of threads, assignment of threads. So you can have a work manager, which you can define as a global work manager, which will be apl applicable for all the applications you have deployed in your domain. And when we talk about the application scope work manager, that means we have a multiple applications and we have a custom work manager for each and every application. That means we have a different kind of a demands for threads for each and every application. So that means in that case, I have to create a application scopic work manager and all these configurations is defined in the WebLogic X application XML file, WebLogic EJB jar XML file and WebLogic.xml file. So these are the different applications file for your var application, for your jar application, for your ER application, where we see when we define the different kind of a work manager configurations. Okay, and this is the default work manager which is used by default in your domain for all the application which is deployed if you are not using any custom work manager so for to see that one you can just go to admin console click on work managers and then you will see that the default work manager is fair share and the partition fair share is 50 so what does it mean 50 that means it is giving the equal priority to all the applications okay the request will come process based on the first in first out priority there would not be any priority to the applications which is coming for a specific application 50 50 in the sense it is given the equal priority to the all applications that means it will distribute the threads from the self-tuning pool to each and every applications in the same way okay and so how it works so it's very simple that uh, a work manager of for module a with a fair share of 80 and the second for module b is 20 that means if i have two applications for 
application A or module A, I have given the 80 and to module B, I have given the 20%. That means 80% 80, 80 of threads from the thread pool will be assigned for module A. 20% of thread from my thread pool will be assigned to module B. This is how this fair share work. Okay. And then what are the ideal situations to use the work managers? So this we have discussed so far in detail that whenever we have a different kind of applications, they have a different kind of a priority. Okay. There where we want a certain application to process the request. Uh, before a particular different application, so we can define that, that kind of a that kind of a priority for the different applications. And there are the ideal situation for work managers where, where we have a different kind of a priorities for different kind of a applications. Okay, so there are two important parameters when we talk about the self thread pool. So as I said, we the web logic is now come with the self thread pool, right? But there's a limitation of the thread, self thread pool as well. Okay, so limitation in that there is a maximum capacity or the maximum value of your self thread pool as well. Okay, and when we talk about the self tuning of thread, that means if I have given a, a maximum capacity of thousand, okay, that means out of thousand threads, it will distribute the threads to my different application based on the priority that I have defined in my work manager. But it is, but it is within the limits. Okay, the limit is that the maximum thread pool size is thousand. My in my case, okay. So self tuning thread minimum pool size is that the minimum pool is that it will initiate whenever we start the manage servers. Okay, it will it will create the initial number of threads which is based on my minimum thread which is defined in my self tuning thread minimum pool size. Okay, and it can go up to the size that I have defined in my self tuning thread maximum pool size. Okay, the default for maximum is four hundred. That means for each and every web logic server which is comes with the default configuration, if we have not modified this one, can create up to four hundred threads in their self tuning thread pool. Okay, so initial size would be one. And based on the later when your request will come to your managed servers and then it is start getting the process in the request where it needs the more threads, then the threads will get assigned from the uh, your thread pool size based on the maximum pool size. That means the threads can go up to the 400 from 1 to 400. And this is the maximum size and the default is 400. Right? Now the question is how we can change the thread pool size. Okay, So you have the liberty, you can change the thread pool size. Either you can change the minimum pool size or you can change the maximum pool size as well. Okay. And if you wanted to change the minimum pool size, for that you have a, a parameter which you can add to your weblogic uh, JVM parameter, okay, which is hyphen d weblogic dot thread pool dot minimum pool size, okay. And how it works? Suppose that I have given the size as twenty, then each for each and every request on top of twenty, it will assign the next twenty, okay. For example, I have given the initial request twenty. If the twenty first request come, it will again assign the next twenty because the minimum minimum pool size is twenty. That means the total thread would be assigned to 40. And if the 41 request will come in, in, in the WebLogic server, it will again assign the next 20. That means the total 60 threat would be there in that case. And this is how this minimum pool size work. Okay. And when we talk about the maximum as well, so you can define it from the WebLogic console as well. For that, go to your uh, admin console, click on servers, then click on your manage server. Here, my manage server name is MS1. Click on configurations, then tuning tab. Inside tuning tab, you have to scroll down and click on advanced tab. Okay, inside advanced tab, you will see self tuning thread minimum pool size and self tuning thread maximum pool size. So, this is the default number of threads for your WebLogic server. The minimum is one and the maximum is 400. And the WebLogic will self tune the threads, okay, which is based on the maximum number of size. If anytime you have a requirement that your uh, threads are not sufficient and you want to increase the capacity of your threads, okay. Then in that case, you can increase the value of self-tuning thread maximum pool size from here. The default is one for minimum and 400 for the maximum. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.